Hello, in today's video, I'm going to be going over lead code number 678, which is titled valid parentheses string. And the problem statement is that given a string containing only three types of characters, the left parentheses, the right parentheses, and asterisks, write a function to check whether the string is valid. And we define the validity of a string by the following rules. And so the rules they give is that any left parentheses must have a corresponding right parentheses, any right parentheses must have a corresponding left parentheses, and the left parentheses must go before the corresponding right parentheses. An asterisk could be treated as a single right parentheses, or a single left parentheses, or an empty string, and an empty string is also valid. So let's go through a few of the examples to better understand what this means. So in example number one, we have an input of, and the output is true because there is a corresponding right parentheses for the left parentheses, and the left parentheses goes before the right parentheses. In example number two, we have almost the same thing, but there's an asterisk in the middle of the two parentheses. And this is also true because these two parentheses correspond to each other. They're left and right parentheses. And the asterisk in the middle can be treated as an empty string, which is also valid. And then if we look at the third example, we have a left parentheses, an asterisk, and two right parentheses. This would also return true because in this case, we can treat the asterisk as being a left parentheses. Okay, so let's go over some ideas for how to solve the problem. So first of all, we can immediately notice that if there were no asterisks, solving this problem would not be very hard. So if there were only left and right parentheses, then to approach this problem, you could simply go from the left to the right of a string and then add one whenever there's a left parentheses and subtract one whenever there is a right parentheses. And then at any point as you're iterating through the string, you get a sum that's below zero. Then you know that there's more right parentheses than left parentheses, and so you can immediately return false because that means that the string would not be valid. So let's try to alter this approach so we can include the asterisk component. So let's just try adding another counter. So right now here we have a counter for the number of left parentheses. So let's try having a counter for the number of asterisks. Okay, so I just drew out a sample case and let's try going over it, accounting for the fact that we have two variables we're adding to, the number of left parentheses and the number of asterisks. And we'll see what we can do as we encounter a right parentheses. So let's start off with the first element, which is a left parentheses. So in this case, we would update number of left by one, so it would become one. Then let's go on to the second element, which is an asterisk. So here we can update the number of asterisks by one, so it becomes one. Then we go on to the right parentheses. So here we could technically take either the left parentheses or the asterisk to be our left parentheses. However, it seems like it would be best to just take num left. The reason why we should take the left parentheses first is because we might need this asterisk for something else later on. Because again, the asterisk can be of three forms, whereas the left parentheses can only be of one. So now that we've encountered a right parentheses, let's just subtract one from num left. So then we get zero. Now let's move on to the second right parentheses. Now here, num left is zero, so we can't subtract from the number of left parentheses. So we look at the number of asterisks, and so we have one asterisk. So that means we would have to use that asterisk. So we would subtract one from there, and then we would have zero. And then we would move on to the next element, which is a left parentheses. And so we would add one, and then this is also left parentheses, so we would add another one. And then afterwards, we have two asterisks, so we would add two to this. So now we've successfully seen that 
we can account for the number of right parentheses. So here we had one asterisk act as a left parentheses. But we notice that now at the end, we still have remaining left parentheses and remaining asterisks that we haven't accounted for. And so in this case, we notice that the number of left parentheses and the number of asterisks are the same. They're both two and they both cancel out well. So the string works out. However, let's say we were to have something different. Let's say we were, we were to have an ending of asterisk, asterisk, left parentheses, and left parentheses. Then in this case, we have no way of distinguishing between this and this. And one of these gives us a right valid string, whereas the other doesn't. So this shows us that we need to keep track of more than just the number of left and the number of asterisks. And what we also need to keep track of is indexes. So let's see how we can keep track of indexes. So we can see that as we're going across the string, we're always taking the left parentheses with the highest index. And we're always taking, if there is no left parentheses, the asterisk with highest index, index, because that just makes the most sense as we've gone through this example. So this motivates the solution of using stacks. So the idea behind stacks is that as we encounter a left parenthesis or an asterisk, we'll add the index to the stack. And so what this means is that whenever we encounter a right parenthesis, we would get rid of the element on top of either stack. And the element on top of either stack is going to be the element with the greatest index, which works out well because it makes sense that when we're pairing a parentheses with another parentheses that we take the parentheses that's closest to the right parentheses. So anyways, let's go over this approach and let's go through this string to see if using stacks will help us. So the first element is left parentheses. So then we would add index zero to the stack. Then the second element is an asterisk. So we would add index one to the stack. So then we would look at the third element, which is a right parentheses. And so we would look at the num left stack first. And so we see that there is an element in there. And so therefore we would get rid of that top element from that stack. Because again, the right parentheses would cancel out that left parentheses. And then let's move on to the next element, which is a right parentheses again. So again, now that num left is empty, the only stack we can look to is the number of asterisks. And so we see that there is an element there. So then we get rid of the element on top. Okay, so let's go on to the next element, which are two asterisks. We would add the index of the first asterisk to the stack first, and then the next, next index on top of that. And then same thing with the asterisks, we would add the six first and then the seven afterwards. So then we have the indexes of both the left parentheses and the asterisks in the stacks, and they're from increasing to decreasing order. So now that we have this, we can notice that, okay, so the stack with num left and the stacks with number of asterisks are great, still have elements in them. So we now we need to check if the asterisks can act as right parentheses and cancel out the left parentheses. So in order to do this, we notice that we can simply just do a while loop. And then within this while loop, we check while num left is not empty and also num asterisk is not empty. And what we want to do is we just want to keep on popping out elements from both stacks, right? Because we want each left parentheses to be canceled out by an asterisk. So we would just do get rid of the element on top of num left. And same with num asterisk. But one thing we need to make sure we consider is the fact that we might have a situation like this, where the asterisks are before the left parentheses. And in this case, this would not be a wild sequence. So in order to check for this, we need to have an if statement where we need to make sure that 
num left of the top is less than the asterisk on top. So num asterisk on top. And if it isn't, then we know that it's not valid, and so then we would return false in that case. So basically, if num left of top is greater than the number of asterisks on top, so the index of the left parentheses is greater than the index of the asterisks, then we would just return false immediately. Okay, so I'm going to go over the code for this problem now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create two stacks of type int, and I'll just call them num left and num ass to refer to the left parentheses and the asterisks. So the next thing we want to do is we want to iterate through the string. And within our iteration, we want to check for each element and we want to see whether it's a left parentheses, a right parentheses, or an asterisk. And if it's a left parentheses, then we would push the index of the element to the num left stack. If it's an asterisk, then we would push the index to the num ast stack. And if it's a right parentheses, then we would first take an element out of the num left stack if there are any elements. So if so if the num left stack is not empty, then we would take an element from there. Otherwise, if the num as stack is not empty, then we would take an element from there. And then if both are empty, then at that point we would have one extra right parentheses than we should have, so then we would just return false. Okay, so now let's move on to the point where if we have extra elements in the num left and num as stacks. So in this case, the asterisks will have to act as right parentheses now. So then again, we're going to have a while loop, and then we're going to go while num left is not empty, and num ass is not empty. And so inside this while loop, we're going to pop both stacks. Because again, we want to match a left parentheses to an asterisk, because the asterisk will act as a right parentheses. But then we also want to keep in mind that if the top element of the num left stack is greater than the top element of the num as stack, then we know that we should return false. And the reason why is because in this case, that would mean that we have a left parentheses after an asterisk. And that would not work. So that's why we return false in this case. And so we just keep on going until num left or num ast, either stack is empty. And so at the very end, well, we, we want to return whether or not num left is empty. Because by the end of this, if num left is not empty, what that means is that there are still extra elements of left parentheses that have not been matched with anything. And so therefore, we do not have a wild string. So let's try running this code and we get that it's ex accepted. So let's try submitting it. We get that it works.